Hello everyone, welcome to Vicar David's 60 second slot. The sun will rise over us from heaven to shine on those sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Words from Luke's Gospel, chapter one. And here are some other words. Uh, these words are uh, more than a guide. These words are rules and these are rules uh, from a particular sport. Let's see if you can guess which sport this one's from. If the ball instead flies between the quarterback's legs, the rule is that the quarterback must be the next person to touch it. Anyone else to touch the ball before the quarterback, offence or defence, gets the play called as a false start by the offence. Get that? Well, maybe the clue is in the word quarterback, which you might know uh, is a position in American football. So that addresses one situation in the game of American football. How about this? A player can play the ball to themselves by heeling it backwards, stepping over the ball and then picking it up to run with it or pass to another player. Once they've done this, their team has one less tackle to play with. Well, that back heel is this from the sport of rugby league. So you can tell it's rugby from a tackle and it's league because uh, the player, um, when they're tackled, doesn't release the ball as they do in rugby union. So how about this last one? If you throw the ball directly into the goal, it won't counter the goal. Directly means that no other player touches the ball. So, as long as the ball doesn't touch any other player, it won't be a goal. A throw straight into the goal without touching any player will be given as a goal kick for the goalkeeper. So you might have got that one. That is from football, from F Association Football Rules, saying that a goal can't be scored directly from a throw-in, uh, only if the ball touches uh, another player. Um, in which case it'll be accredited to the player or given as an own goal. Well, those rules are for particular specific situations in particular sports. And some people um, think that the Bible should um, operate like this, that um, we should look for um, guidelines or rules for any particular situation that we might find ourselves in. And by um, looking uh, closely at uh, different texts, we might the Bible might speak to us and say, this is what you've got to do. And that's what God wants you to do. Well, it might come as a surprise to you, but um, I don't think that's what the Bible um, is there for. I don't think that's how we should approach the Bible because I don't think that's how the Bible speaks to us. Rather, I think it's a, a guide to for, for which we can measure any particular situation or circumstance we find ourselves in against the experience of people uh, in a, a particular time and place, but the, from their relationship with their God. And then from their experience, see what that says in our own situation. We have another uh, book uh, about sports rules called You Are the Ref. And in this book, You Are the Ref, uh, there are particular situations in a, in a game of football which are unusual or unforeseen in, in set out in uh, cartoon form and you've got to decide what to do as the referee. So for example, uh, a great big bird comes and lands right in front of goal uh, when a, a player is uh, approaching uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the ball, the striker's coming with the, the ball. What should the referee do in that situation? And it's rather, there isn't a rule set out to say, this is what you do in that circumstance, because you can't foresee every different situation we might find ourselves in, in life as in um, a sports gap match, a game of football. Rather, we've got to do, uh, as the referee does in that book, is to try and work out what the spirit of the rules are. What's the spirit of the game? And what's that spirit saying is the best outcome in that situation? And that's how I believe we should um, try and understand what God's will for us might be through looking at the lived experience of other people that the Bible gives us as a, as a witness to their experience, how that's been interpreted by the church over the centuries, through our own prayers and through conversations with other Christians as well, uh, to try and work out what the Spirit of God is saying to us in a particular situation, not as a set of rules as this that's a, a definite uh, command that you've got to do this in that situation but try and work out what the will of God is try and work out how that we might have our feet guided in the way of peace and live in that sunshine of God's love over us from heaven and I think this is a much more better and um, fulfilling way of living out our faith because just following a set of rules would just be blind obedience 
Whereas not being 100% certain and trying to work out what the will of God might be is, I think, much more the way of faith. It's more demanding, but it's more rewarding. And in that uh, living out and working out our faith in our, in our daily lives, what the guidance of God um, is, that's how I think that God's will may be done and our lives will then be lived more fully in the uh, sunshine uh, above us of God's love. Thank you very much for watching and God bless you.